What is happening now is a more fundamental, profound change than mankind has ever experienced. Today looks nothing like our yesterdays. We open our eyes in the 1980s and we see a world that's totally new. The most common everyday things in our lives are changing at an incredibly rapid pace. Watches aren't just watches. They're calendars. Clocks are radios. Music is video. Televisions aren't just for entertainment, they're for banking or getting a degree. Telephones aren't just for calling home anymore, they're for accessing data banks containing every conceivable kind of information, for sending copies of letters and drawings across the globe in seconds. Telephones are in our cars as well as our homes and offices. Our homes and offices are coming together more and more. With computers, people are able to work at home or telecommute light still wakes us in the morning as it always has. But now laser light performs surgery without a scalpel, treats cancerous cells, predicts earthquakes, or shoots underground through hair-thin fibers of glass carrying thousands of messages at lightning speed. Welcome to the Information Age. I'm Robert Trumbull, and I'm here to take you on a journey through mankind's history to the threshold of a world of new opportunities, a world of wonders matched only by our dreams. In the agricultural age, life was based on the lessons man learned from his past, when to plant, when to harvest, and man created tools, the wheel, the plow, to aid in his survival. In the industrial age, man labored in factories. Life was based on the present. Produce the goods, ship them out. And man created new tools, machines, assembly lines. The industrial age peaked several decades ago, with most of the American workforce employed in manufacturing and heavy industry. Then, things began to change. People moved into jobs as office workers, librarians, managers. By 1956, over one half the workforce was involved in the creating, processing, and distributing of information. In 1957, the Russians launched Sputnik, and a new era began. Suddenly, a much smaller world could communicate by satellite. In the information age, our new tools, computers and communication technologies, have extended both our physical and our intellectual capabilities. As we begin to think, create, and communicate globally, our gaze shifts to the future. With the tools of the information age, we look forward to a richer, longer, more interesting life. Scientists believe that the technologies of this new age may even allow us to extend ourselves perceptually, to move through seams and even manipulate parts of the environment at long distance. And what I see as the ultimate uh, result of uh, fiber optics, uh, uh, lasers, uh, and the new developments in holography, which are just very rudimentary, just, just far beyond uh, fiber optics, but coming along, uh, is a time when you can uh, do just what those fellows do in Star Trek. You can beam up and down. Uh, you can create uh, yourself electronically somewhere else or deal with someone electronically here by, by uh, holography, three-dimensional uh, living, moving uh, television. And you may say, that's, a, that's a, you know, 
a pie in the sky. But if you look at the trends, that's something that will become a reality, if not at the end of this century, certainly sometime in the next century. The tools of the information age, computers and communications, were separate technologies for years. Today, they are rapidly coming together to create systems that will offer the capabilities and economies of the future. The first large-scale computer, ENIAC, was produced by Sperry Rand in 1946. It was the size of a room. It had 18,000 vacuum tubes, and one of them blew every six minutes. The changes that occurred after the development of the ENIAC with its vacuum tubes involved the use of the transistor, which was invented shortly thereafter. The transistor is different from the vacuum tube in many ways. It is more reliable. It does not break as easily. It uses far less power. And it is, uh, its lifetime is enormous compared to that of the vacuum tube. It's the development of the uh, transistor and its successors, the integrated circuits, which have reduced the size of the computer from that of a room down to something the size of a fingernail. Today, this tiny, reliable microcomputer performs thousands of times more tasks than ENIAC for a fraction of the cost. If automobiles had advanced in the same ways as computers, a car today would cost $2.50, would get 1.5 million miles per gallon, and would weigh about half a pound. Communications, the other technological tool of the information age, had slower beginnings than computers. Delivery of messages took days, weeks, sometimes even years. Then messages were sent by mail, telegram, telephone. Undersea cables and satellite technology made it possible for nations to communicate in a matter of seconds. Now the science of light communications has turned the highways of yesterday into the superhighways of the information age, where our ideas travel on light beam path. A tiny laser the size of a pinhead sends an intense beam of light through a thread of glass or optical fiber. The light beam pulses at an amazing 90 million times per second. It would take yesterday's copper telephone lines 21 hours to transmit the same amount of information that an optical fiber sends in one second. Already, Hundreds of thousands of miles of fiber optics networks crisscross the country and the world. The 1984 Summer Olympic Games were telecast via a digital television lightwave system, linking 23 Olympic event sites. Each time the laser switches off and on in a fiber optics network, a bit of information moves through the glass thread. The light beam is talking digital, the language of computers. Computers are learning another language. Hours. We'll be very smart. With all the developments that are going on at present, we hope that in the not too far distant future, it will be possible to carry out this conversion from the spoken word to the computer and be able to tell the computer directly by mouth what it is you want it to do. This will save an enormous amount of uh, bother and effort in converting uh, the your ideas to a written form, typing them, and sending them out in that way. This will make the computer more friendly and a much more usable device. Computers and communication merging to form the systems of the information age. In the past, manufacturers provided just one part of the information business, computers or communications equipment. Customers are now looking to buy systems from one source. So companies worldwide are broadening their products and services by investing or merging. This integration of technology will link many of the operations of a factory or business into a single centralized system with global access to information. So sometime, perhaps in the not too distant future, the following scenario could take place. A scientist in Italy makes a major discovery. He enters it into a world data bank. A researcher at a U.S. company sees the data and calls the engineering department. The engineer designs the product. 
and sends the plans to the foreman, who programs the plans into his computer, which automatically re-gears the assembly line and orders the parts from inventory. The advertising department develops the new product introduction, and the sales team is trained via teleconferencing. All of these functions are performed and coordinated by one system. With the integration of technologies, we'll be able to pool the expertise of great minds worldwide. We'll have instantaneous access to information that will solve problems, prevent crimes, save lives. Imagine, a child's life is saved because the knowledge of doctors nationwide is pooled and immediately accessible to a small town physician who is quickly able to diagnose and treat the problem. An elusive mineral, vital to the economy of a region, is located hundreds of times more quickly at a fraction of the cost. Because the expertise of nationwide geologists is pooled and focused on the search. Do these sound like scenarios of the distant future? They're not. These are technological applications that have already been implemented. And the technologies are almost in place to turn these and many other information age benefits into affordable, widely available realities. Almost. We need to go a step further. The United States must develop an information infrastructure, the final stage in the merging of communications and computer technologies. In the industrial age, a region's economic growth and vitality depended on the efficient planning of transportation, water, sewer, and electrical systems. In the information age, the growth industries will be attracted to the regions that develop strong information infrastructures. An information infrastructure is a grid a fiber optic cable, microwave towers, satellites, connecting telephones to computers, to buildings, to cities, to nations. Those towns, cities, states, and countries that develop the strongest infrastructures will get the largest share of a global communications market that will be worth over $1 trillion by 1990. How can we be sure that the United States will have a strong share of that market. We have foreign competitors who are ready and able to penetrate our markets here in the USA. Japan's goal, for example, is to gain a 30% share of the world computer market and an 18% share of the American market by 1990. Japan has announced that they're going to build a fifth generation computer which is really a computer that goes beyond what anything we have today. It, it deals with building what is now uh, called artificial intelligence or expert systems. They're inference engines where they learn from themselves and they provide knowledge to you and you don't deal with them just by processing transactions. <clears throat> you give it data and it uh, gives you back information. Uh, you give it more information and it learns from itself and it continues to build its knowledge. And uh, this fifth generation computer is going to, if it's successful, uh, could put Japan miles ahead of the rest of the world. Other countries are also advancing rapidly in information age technologies. The French Postal and Communications Authority plans to equip each of its 30 million telephone subscribers with a video data terminal by 1992. The same systems are operational in the United Kingdom, Canada, West Germany, and Japan. The United States is making similar advances in information age technologies and infrastructures, but our lead is slim and getting slimmer. The communications equipment business is a good example. It's a $40 billion market expected to grow to $90 billion in the next five years. But for the first time, in 1983, the United States imported more communications equipment than it exported. Our world market shares in switching equipment, fiber optics manufacturing, and microprocessing are being challenged. We've seen our major industries lose world market positions in the past. Between 1959 and 1979, 
many of our leading companies in the chemical, electronic, appliance, automotive, and manufacturing industries lost positions as world market leaders. With information technology approaching a $1 trillion market, and with high-tech industries creating jobs 30% faster than any other industry, there is too much at stake to let the same thing happen to our information age industries. Because after all, we are in a competitive environment and the one that can produce the lowest cost quality service is going to win the business. And I think the people who do the best job of producing technology driven products that are quality low cost products are going to be the winners. American minds have brought the greatest technologies of all time to the world. Because if there's one thing Americans have always valued, it's a good idea. But if the United States is to remain the leader in the information age, good ideas will have to come at a faster pace than ever before. Businesses and government policymakers will need to have a far-sighted, unified vision of the future. And plans that allow for the development of a strong nationwide infrastructure as critical to economic development in the information age as good highways were to economic development in the industrial age. Plans that free American information age companies to use their resources to introduce the technologies of the future as economically as possible and with widespread availability to the public because the public has the right to the best performance that the most advanced technologies can offer now, not later. We open our eyes in the 1980s and we see a world that requires a greater, more far-seeing vision than ever before. Some people say that the United States has lost the ability to have a greater vision of the future, that business people and policymakers are only concerned with short-term catch-as-catch-can problem-solving. I disagree. We're world leaders because our vision has always encompassed the past, present, and future. Some people say the entrepreneurs and dreamers are no longer with us, just when we need them the most. But since information and the good ideas that follow are our most precious commodities in this new age, we're way ahead. Ever since there was an America we have valued the ingenuity of the human mind. Our greatest minds in business, politics, and technology will continue to work together to anticipate and meet the challenges of our tomorrows.